One of the problems with love is we don't know ourselves well enough to know who we want. Introducing Secrets of Birthdays, the Love and Lust Report. You send us your date of birth, we send you a custom video, and we'll talk all about you. The kind of charisma you have, your personality, are you funny, not funny? What's a perfect romance? What's a perfect wedding? What's a perfect home? And what not to do with you? Find out the secret to your heart at secretsofbirthdays.com. And all the uncertainty. Order one now. Namaste, and welcome to Soul Horoscope's Orbits Edition. From my webcam to yours, I'm Christopher Ray Manwatecki, your astrologer and soul biographer, here to help you put the pieces of your karmic story together. Well, Mother Earth is under the love rays of Virgo. In fact, Chapter 2 of Sun and Virgo, we're going to wrap up Chapter 2 this week. We're working on reality, the IB state of awareness, and we're going to transform our reality this week and become proficient at what we do. By the end of the week, we will step into what I call Master Shui, where we rule our lives literally from our passion. Now, looking at emotions, the moon starts with Love Fest Day on Sunday, and then on Monday, we have a little bit of Sirius as the moon crosses over Saturn in Scorpio. It gets jolly again on Thursday and Friday in Sagittarius, and Sirius again in Capricorn this weekend. The moon signs most affected are Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, and Capricorn, and on the dark side of the moons, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and Cancer. Looking at our orbits, man, Emotions are harboring around our throat chakra this week. That's because the moon in Libra and Scorpio. But then by the end of the week, it hits your sinuses. Now, emotions can literally clog you up, especially something you don't want to talk about. Lilith and Jupiter has finally stabilized in our solar plexus, and that means we're not going to have as much digestion issues. And there's a party going on in the heart chakra, and Mercury is now moved up to the throat chakra, which means truths will be spilling out from now through Halloween. Going to be fun. Indeed, those truths, right? Looking at the planets, we have really mostly, I think, the most important trine of the day is this one, Black Lilith at 10 degrees this week, trining Saturn. What this means is that we are really, for some, turning our back on some multi-lifetime deep emotional karma, or at least till childhood. So many people of all ages are kind of as a whole planet unifying and saying goodbye to some old karma, in some cases relationships, in some cases emotional damage. But the good news is we are actually healing, folks. This light work actually works. You're going to feel that with that trine. Now, we've been feeling this for a while, the T-square. It was a grand square for a while with Venus. But the good news is having Venus transit through Libra on the opposite side of Uranus, it really gave us the ability to see what's fair, to process through what's fair. And this week, you're going to see some movement on the T-square or some inner movement anyways, because now you're operating from a sense of justice. That's good news. I'll talk about that upstairs. And then lastly, this is interesting as well. Venus is transiting up into Scorpio. That's the next transit, which means we're going to be creating and destroying, right? Venus is the sign of creativity. Scorpio is the gateway. So uh, relationships, all sorts of things uh, creating and destroying. But it's all trining into Neptune in Pisces, which to me says uh, whatever is being creative and destroyed might be fate. That's right. When God universe or Pisces energy comes into that sort of interaction or intersection of energy, usually this is the hand of fate as in certain births, as in, of course, certain deaths and, of course, certain successes. So that's also something to be looking out for. And then finally, getting close on the planets, as the week starts off, it's Love Fest Day, then Sirius as the moon crosses over that Saturn and Scorpio. And the end of the week, again, like I said, it gets serious because the moon crosses Pluto and Capricorn. Now, let's take a look at the real important details, the details about you. So climb in the Ascension Elevator and I'll see you upstairs. Folks, this is your captain speaking. We realize you have a choice in the astrologers you choose to fly with, and we'd just like to thank you for flying with Christopher Watecki. Namaste, Cancers and Cancer Risings, and welcome to 33,000 feet for a bird's eye view of you. Well, it has been a difficult time. The universe is calling for Cancers to let go of old mind games, old battles of the mind, uh, ADD, uh, depression, anything that pulls you into the mind. And that's because Jupiter is pushing for Cancers to move to the next edition of who they are. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But it's the new ego. It's a new personality, which means you got to get rid of the old fights. And right now, 
The battle is in the mind. Well, not anymore. There was a break in the last seven days with cancers breaking through old mind games. Now, when it comes to thoughts, cancers and cancer risings are like Virgos. You hang on to specific details, specific things, specific psych cyclical thinking because it grounds all of your emotions. But every now and then, every, uh, you know, every dozen years or so, we have to upgrade our thinking at least so that we can accommodate the new feelings and new strengths and in the old cyclical thinking or game. So that is the primary story. But also Saturn calling for you to draw new limits to take care of your own heart now, to take care of your own inner child, to take care of your own personal dreams. And so that means you have to say no to yourself, to say no to others when it comes to love. You're also becoming more sensitive uh, with your emotions and your ego, but at the same time uh, cutting away the old crap. This week with Black Loath, maybe ending forever some sort of fights, ending forever some sort of actions or duties that you used to do on earth you no longer want to do. And then finally, struggling for strength to move forward and innovate your career and legacy, but feeling pulled back and forth between ego struggles for strength and humility and also relationships. Many relationships dying forever now because Pluto is ready to move to its next chapter. These are the cycles and circles of the crabs. So as we start this week, we're moving into chapter three of the sun in Virgo. And that means you're gonna move out of the thoughts and mind games and all that stuff and try to stay objective and into attitude, finding your message, finding your tone and letting your tone and message maybe choose some of the words. Now the sun moves from step 16 to step 22. So your mind's gonna open up intuitively at the beginning of the week. And by the end of the week, you're gonna get passion uh, about something, maybe about a new attitude, maybe about a new idea, maybe about a new message for those of you who are messengers. Thoughts are already thinking ahead to home, family, and feelings, which is next month's topic. Now, Jupiter in your sign has finally reached step 15 and step 16. That means we're over the hump, 50% complete, or at least introduced to the ego changes. And step 15 is peace. Step 16 means God universe. So you're gonna be stepping into an intuitive led actions at the end of the week, but this week still trying to find harmony between the heart and the ego. Black Lilith, however, is saying you've cut away forever, I think, uh, some wars in your life, some opponents in your life, and maybe, as they say in the old tarot and astrology, uh, enemies, old enemies. Now, Saturn in Scorpio says, time to be strong with the inner child. You're still intuiting what your heart wants or doesn't want. You're not quite sure. This might be still going back and forth over uh, a love affair or a marriage or a creative project or a book or something you want to do. Ask your guides. But by the end of the week, it is decision time. The universe is going to want to know what's going on with the crabs and personal dreams. Now, last week, the real turning point was like cast day. That was Wednesday and Thursday where the sun and moon came together and the universe said, okay, set your intentions for your attitude. That was, for a lot of cancers I know, a very argumentative day inside of themselves or with others, and it was difficult for them. But Thursday, there was breakthrough, hopefully, and by Friday, the light bulb went on as far as the right attitude to take or perhaps even the right information you were looking for. This week, we begin on Love Fest Day, the most powerful loving day of the month. And this is a day where you can really heal a lot of your soul. The moon will be in Libra on this day, so you'll be nesting and resting, but your mind will be full of joy and hope. On Monday, it's time to decide. What you're deciding is, is what is the new attitude or what is the direction you wanna go with thoughts or how do you wanna expand your mind? If you're involved in a legal case, it might be what is the next step? The moon is in Scorpio, so your inner child is quite sensitive. And so your inner child is kind of paying or playing into that attitude decision. And the moon is crossing Scorpio, so you're having to emotionally grow up about something on Monday, um, even though you know it's bittersweet and needs to happen. On Tuesday, action rules a day. It'll be sunny and childlike, and there's a chance of anxiety if you don't act on what your inner child wants. Now, technically, you're acting on the new attitude. This might be you applying for something. This might be you pursuing something in court. This might be you objecting. This might be you stepping into or starting a book. You wanna start something intellectually positive on Tuesday and likely something creative or fun on top of that because the moon is in Scorpio. Wednesday, you're loving and trusting that this new attitude is gonna be fine and it's a great creative day or a great planning day with the moon in those high vibrations of the fifth house. On Thursday, it gets very passionate, master shui, 20 degrees, and the moon is in Sagittarius. So you could feel a little ill. You could have some issues with digestion on this day if you're not managing the emotions or if your mind goes the wrong way. You don't wanna let your mind go the wrong way on Thursday. And if you're watched over by the guardian agency, 
you can be bet I'll be warning you in that in your daily text. So Thursday is the day to just hold space and trust everything will be okay. On Friday, Jupiter rules the day, so the universe is likely going to blow your mind, hopefully, but it's only by following your feelings. So emotions and passion leads to an expanded mindset or perhaps getting the bright idea or perhaps finding the bright attitude that you want to adopt for the rest of the month. So I'm seeing some rainbow stars and flowers on Thursday, flower power. Uh, I mean, excuse me, on Friday, but it's on Saturday where there's probably going to be some breakthroughs. So much going on. For one, it's sunny and sentimental, um, or you're focused on the me ridge because the moon is in Capricorn, and so emotions are kind of opposing ego. So there's a tension there. There might also be a tension there in your relationships, just so you know. But Uranus rules the day, which means it will be a breakthrough, an innovative breakthrough at the master shui level. So you might have a, you know, you might find like something let you down only to be a breakthrough, like, the movie you want to go to isn't open, but then instead you find something amazing or a new group of friends. Or, so it's kind of one of those days where bummer leads to great. And the cool thing is, is that Jupiter shifts to uh, 16 degrees, which means that now your ego expansion will be led by God's service or be led by spiritual miracles. So spirituality, you know, follow your spiritual nose on Saturday. It always knows. Hey, I want to invite you to one of my favorite places on the Internet. I think you've heard of it before. That's right. It is soulgarden.me. And the reason I'm inviting is because we have been doing a lot of development work for the last few weeks, and we finally have a block of some amazing program, amazing practitioners. Come on down, hang out with us, be a part in our studio audience. For one, Master One Feather. Now, Wednesdays is amazing. We start in the morning with One Feather. He does tarot cards. He helps people. We're all in chat together. It's a really nice kind of cozy breakfast feel. <coughs> Excuse me. Don Leahy comes after that. And she helps people learn their charts and astrology. And that's a real hoot because the girls are always looking up uh, some fun stuff. Then there's Practical Wizardry. That's my personal show where I'm teaching people the practical magic of life. And then Wednesdays we have Matt Turner. He is a uh, psychic and he does uh, basic psychic channeling and answering questions. So all that is free and you can be in the studio audience if you're a member of soulgarden.me. Now Fridays is the other cool day we're lining up. We have a voice coach called Melody. She'll help you stand in your vocal power. We have a new show called Dear Zen. She's a master Taurus and she gives some solid advice. Then we're bringing back Astro Gossip with a fabulous team of four and we have a teen show coming after that. Now everything happens and we call the Wateki Theater. This is actually a shot of it. It's beautiful. We all chat together. We hang out. It's really one big happy family. It's Solgar and Dami and I just want to invite everyone to come take a look at the new practitioners and what we're offering. They're a great group of people. Well that's all I have for this week. I am so grateful that you log in and I'm grateful for your patronage. I'm also going to say to you one simple thing. Keep that mind on track, you know. You use Virgo energy to find the right things uh, to focus on, and you stay focused on those. So I recommend, you know, you might write down like four keywords for the week that you make sure your mind always stays within. That's what Live, Love, Be is to me. It's the keywords that keep my mindset in. All right, that's all I have for the week. Namaste. I love you. Live, Love, Be. With the moon in Cancer, emotions and intellect are now coming together like a Reese's penis. Oops. <laughs> Reese's penis. <laughs>